Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Yes, our God is a God who keeps his promise in everything that he's done, in everything that he has spoken, he has always accomplished. The Bible says, heaven and earth may pass away, but his word will never pass away. He is a faithful God. It doesn't matter what you have done. He knows it all. All our Lord desires is our sincerity of heart and a very repentant heart and a heart that seeks after Him, a heart that loves Him. Let us think about the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said that He would give us. This gift of the Holy Spirit is to help us. Some of you may be even struggling to pray. We don't know what words to say. But Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf. He will give us the words to pray. How loving is our God that He has given us everything. Nothing held back. Everything. As we pray, there is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We pray that all of you may open your hearts, may open your minds to receive the Spirit of God that God is pouring out so freely. Jesus said, our, hair, our earthly fathers, however evil they are, they still know how to give good gifts to their children. How much more? How much more will a perfect father, our heavenly father, give us the gift of the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Yes. Jesus said there will come a time where neither on this mountain nor on those mountain. True worshippers are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us invite the Holy Spirit. Let us thirst for the Holy Spirit right now. Let us tell the Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is the third person in the Trinity. Let us invite the presence of the Holy Spirit amidst us. Bye. 
satisfy us, Lord. Satisfy my needs. Only you can make me grow. Give me strength to make me grow. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. For the fresh oil. Fresh on me, fall afresh on me, fall afresh, fall afresh on me, fall afresh, Lord, fall afresh on me, fall afresh on me, spirit move, spirit move. So take this time, just, just thank the Holy Spirit and welcome Him in our midst. Welcome Holy Spirit, we thank you God. We praise you, we glorify you. Oh comforter and friend. Thank you. There is a reign of the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, rain down. We 
want to walk in holiness we want to do the things that are pleasing to you but holy spirit of god we want to be honest and tell you that there are many times that we have failed thank you holy spirit of god that you are empowering us to walk in holiness any habitual sins that has made us slaves we pray for freedom spirit where for where the spirit of god is there is freedom we set free brothers and sisters in the name of jesus holy spirit dwelling in our in us the holy spirit is stirred within us let us be aware of the presence of the holy spirit in us our bodies are the temple of the holy spirit thank you holy spirit we praise you we glorify you thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you holy spirit
Now, what is a boost reed? A reed is this plant, like a pipe-like structure that was used to make musical instruments, used for many other things. Now, if it was boost, hurt in some place, kind of broken in some place, it was completely useless. The Lord is saying, I will not take even a boost reed, which is pretty much useless. What is a smoldering wick? You know, we put wicks into oil to light. And a smoldering wick is one, when lit, it kind of keeps flickering because there are some impurities and it doesn't burn bright. A wick is cheap, right? You pick one, throw it out, just replace it with another one. The Lord is saying he will not even snuff out a smoldering imperfect wick. He uses broken people like you and I for his kingdom and he will bring victory in the end. God is powerful enough to use people like us to establish his kingdom. His ways are so different from the ways of the world, right? It's a very harsh world out there, right? Governments are harsh, our jobs are harsh. It's it's a kind of manly man. There's so much competition, whether it's in schools, colleges. Only those who are dominating and aggressive are the ones who are most successful. And the Lord in the midst of this is an oasis of gentleness. Because he says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from it, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our God is a God of gentleness, which is refreshing and so different from what this world teaches us. Now, what is gentleness according to the Bible? Gentleness comes from the Greek word proutes, which means meekness, right? And meekness is not an indication of weakness, but instead is an indication of power and strength under control. A person who is meek possesses the quality to pardon injuries, to correct faults, as well as to exhibit a great deal of restraint and wounds, wounds his own spirit. Um, contrary to what a lot of us would think that gentleness or, is a sign of weakness, it is not. True gentleness is a sign of great self-control. It is not something that is easily done, you know. Gentleness comes from humility. It comes from when we do not think of ourselves as above people. Because a person who does not have humility possibly has a lot of pride, is angered more easily and also possibly seeks revenge. An example of gentleness is seen in the Gospels where you know, the Pharisees bring in the woman who had committed adultery. And the Lord says, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. This is from John chapter 8 verse 7. Jesus exhibits gentleness. In his quiet, he doesn't let anyone else touch him. And he also forgives her sins. Gently. Just like how Jesus is with the woman in the story, God is gentle with us. How many times do we sin? But all we need to do is seek his forgiveness. Forgiveness and he draws us back to him. And the basis of this is God loves us. God wants us to be gentle to others. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 and 15 he says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, the Father will not forgive your sins. A gentle heart comes from love for others, wanting the best for others. And this is shown in the way we react to other people and the way we think. Once again, gentleness is not a sign of weakness, it is a sign of inner strength that requires great self-control. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 points out to us, Brothers, even if a person is caught in some transgression, you who are spiritual should correct that one in a gentle spirit, looking to yourself so that you also may not be tempted. Because sometimes correcting people we lose our temper unnecessarily. We are let you say we should correct someone in a gentle manner. 
a humble person who is meek right has a very docile spirit has a quiet spirit even in the face of transgression or difficulty it is said in matthew chapter 11 verse 29 and jesus was meek and humble of heart in fact saint augustine calls us to be meek in the face of the lord and to be obedient now obedience and submission aren't exactly in vogue nowadays in our world where it's expected to be strong and opinionated the lord is asking us to be meek to be obedient to him to submit ourselves to him look at the lives of the saints a lot of them were priests and nuns they lived within the structure and um the authority of their congregations or their convents they obeyed their superiors one example i can give you is padre pio right a very gifted priest and yet when a stigmata was called into question he could not celebrate mass or hear confessions for a long period of time and although he knew the lord was with him he did not fight this but he listened to the authority of his superiors sensible for us if we are to be holy and this is something we forget it is not enough to do the word of the lord it is not enough to attend masses even possibly to lead in praise and worship gentleness is indispensable when we think of jesus when we think of the king of kings we often remember jesus as a god who went to the temple and who turned the tables and rebuked the pharisees who used the temple as a place of business Sometimes we tend to forget Jesus the good shepherd. We tend to forget this king of kings when questioned by the chief priests and Pontius Pilate could have easily escaped. He had retorts. He knew that he could speak with authority and yet he stood quiet. Gentleness. It's not that he didn't know the truth. But he didn't fight authority. He stood and exhibited a great amount of self-control. Our holy father Pope Francis speaks of gentleness. And he says that this is a somewhat forgotten virtue. Is it so? Why? Um, he talks about the importance of gentleness and how when we are born of the Spirit, we should be kind, we should be humble, we should treat others fairly and with a great deal of respect because all of this stems from a love for each other. And he talks about how little things distort this and we're running to be gentle because we don't treat people with respect simple example is gossip which is entered every part of our lives right he talks about even among the catechists there is gossip when they speak about each other they mean each other they judge each other it was directly against gentleness if you're truly born of the spirit we will start treating each other We Jesus treats us. We are sinners, and He does not judge us. Who are we to condemn another person? Instead, look at them with love. Slowly eliminate things like gossip, little as they may be, entertaining as they may be. They stand in the way of us. We do not even. I read a short article by this lady named Teresa Thomas. She talks about a time when she had a terrible throat infection due to which over a period of time she couldn't talk very much, right? It was to hurt, so she could barely manage a whistle. She tried for the most part using symbols and writing things down. But there were a few times where she did need to talk to her children and so she would whisper things out. And she realized that within a day, without asking them to do so, her children were also whispering to her. and they were also paying a lot more attention to what she wanted and this was a revelation to her she says that there's great power in the way someone speaks she says in speaking very little she managed to get a lot more done and she managed to bring out the same kind of behavior in her children how much of an influence does our behavior have on the people around us So much more is the need for us to be meek and gentle in the way we 
There's a there was very old perfume ad in the nineteen seventies which said, if you want to capture someone's attention, whisper. So true. Because everyone will have to be quiet to listen to you. We don't have to yell at the top of our voices. We don't have to be dominating. We just need to whisper. Saint Francis de Sales wrote, "Nothing is so strong as gentleness. Nothing so gentle as real strength." So now we know that our God is a gentle God. But how do we grow in gentleness? Lord and Eve now share some insights on how to do this. First, we need to have an accurate perception of what gentleness is. Gentleness is really a strength and not a weakness. And when we view gentleness as a strength, we can slowly work towards becoming more gentle in our approach. Secondly, we will need to think of all the ways that God has been gentle with us. From the dawn of creation, we have sinned against Him in little ways every day. Walking out of a confessional, I'm pretty sure we have sinned against God and another person, and yet He loves us. He loves us so much that His Son died for us, and He continues to love us even though we fail Him time and time again. Our God is a gentle and a loving God, and we should try and reflect His nature. We want to be like Him. We try and be more gentle. Finally, we ask God for the grace to be more gentle, and we incorporate this into our lives. We pray. We ask God. To give us a spirit of gentleness, to show us ways in which we may be more gentle with others. We ask God that we may be more like Him. And so, there's a simple principle in any situation. What would Jesus do? Think for a second, and then maybe act or speak. If we try and do what the Lord would do, it's no way we can. Gentleness is a strength. It is important and it is indispensable for us if we want to reach heaven one day. So let's work together a little bit every day to become more meek. So say this prayer to me every day: Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like yours. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for loving us. Faults and feelings. We thank you that you show us mercy and kindness. We ask you to be the center of our hearts, our lives, and our church. Holy Spirit, guide our paths. Correct us when we are wrong and help us to do what is right, so that we may come closer to Jesus every day. Father, do. What is right in our lives? We accept you when we submit ourselves completely to you. Help us to be more and more like you each day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.